Well, hi guys, this is Dr. Bailey. I'm a board certified orthodontist as well as the co-founder of TrayMinder. TrayMinder is an app that I created to help my patients to remember to wear and change their aligners. In today's video, I'm going to go over some common misconceptions in orthodontics. Let's get started. The first one is TMJ. A lot of patients say, oh, I have TMJ. Actually, the right way to say it is I have TMD. Uh, TMJ actually stands for temporal mandibular joint. So we all have a joint. So to say that I have TMJ just means I have an elbow joint or I have a you know, temporal mandibular joint. If you have discomfort, you have clicking, popping, you have open jaw lock or closed jaw lock, or you have... Um, pain that radiates to your, your jaw muscles or you get tension headaches as a result of your jaw dysfunction, that's called TMD, temporal mandibular disorder. If you have discomfort with your temporal mandibular joint, it's important to seek guidance from your general dentist or a temporal mandibular joint specialist. The second misconception in orthodontics is overbite versus overjet. A lot of people say, I have too much of an overbite. And I think they mean that they're saying that their top teeth are sticking out too far forward compared to their bottom teeth. In proper orthodontic terminology, over jet uh, is when the top teeth, uh, it's the relationship between the top teeth and the bottom teeth. Overbite, in contrast, has to do with the relationship, with the vertical relationship between the top teeth and bottom teeth. So when the top teeth and bottom teeth, they overlap too much, that's called a deep bite or, call, or it's called an overbite, too much of an overbite. Ideally, um, patients will have about uh, two to three millimeters of overjet, which means that their top front teeth sticks out two to three millimeters in front of their bottom front teeth. And ideally, an overbite should be about 15 to 20%. The third misconception in orthodontics is when patients ask me to level all of their front teeth so that it's flat across. So um, that's actually an incredibly aging look um, because as we get wiser, as we get older, our teeth, they wear down as a result of just wear and tear or our grinding habits, especially if you have deep bite, they get worn down. So if you uh, look at fashion magazines, you'll see that a lot of the models will have uh, actually a smile arc where their front central incisors are the lowest the lateral incisors are typically about half a half a millimeter higher the canines are a little bit lower so having that sort of that natural smile progression or smile arc is also a very youthful looking type uh, smile that we like in orthodontics and we don't actually want to have your teeth flat right across the fourth misconception in orthodontics is that the dental midlines are uh, have to be 100% on. So of course, ideally your two front teeth, the center of your two front teeth, they should line up coincidentally with the lower two front teeth. And also your dental midlines will be coincident with the rest of your face in ideal situations. However, in real life, not everybody's bites will allow for that to happen. Some of us may have slightly bigger teeth on one side versus the other side. So that very slight bit of discrepancy in tooth size, um, maybe just a 0.2 millimeter and you amplify that over a couple of teeth can cause you to have a perceptible difference in your dental midline. Also, you know, your two front teeth in relationship with your face is also kind of deceiving because the nose, a lot of people like to use their, their nose on their, their noses on their face as like a landmark for where their front teeth should be. And the nose is actually a poor marker of midline because most people have some deviations of their noses 
to one side or the other side. So it's best to kind of use different landmarks, maybe the forehead or between the eyes using the cupid's bow of your lips or your philtrum. Even the chin can deviate to one side or another. It's not uncommon to have some asymmetry of the, of the mandible. So when you are assessing the midlines, it's really important to look at the entire face and also um, sometimes it's not possible for the dental midlines to be coincident without doing uh, other things that you can discuss with your orthodontist. If you're interested, I have a, a video on midlines and that will provide more detail. I'll link it below in the description box below. The fifth misconception in the orthodontics is the speed at which your orthodontic treatment can be completed. I sometimes get the, you know, the comment about, oh, well, my cousin's treatment only took six months. Why does my treatment take two years? Well, there are a lot of things that must be taken into consideration. For one thing, if you already have an ideal bite and you have some misalignment, usually that will take less time than somebody who not only have misalignment, but they also need to have bite correction as well. When we correct the bite, we have to move every single tooth on the top and every single tooth on the bottom, and that takes time. Of course, there's also natural uh, diversity within people. Um, some people, they their teeth move faster and some people's teeth move slower. There's also patient factor, right? So if you are wearing your clear aligners and uh, to, to fix your teeth and bite, if you're not wearing it enough, your teeth won't move as efficiently and that can add time to your treatment. The next misconception in orthodontics is that the upper and lower front teeth should sit right on top of each other like this. And that's actually called an edge to edge bite. We don't actually want to have an edge to edge bite because the front teeth are made to overlap each other. So imagine that you have a box and a lid. The lid should fit over the box. It should not be right on top of the box. If your top and bottom incisors are sitting right on top of each other, that's actually very damaging to your enamel and it can cause wear and tear of your top and bottom front teeth. The seventh misconception in orthodontics is that rubber bands don't move teeth. Some of my patients, they're going through clear aligner therapy and or they're in braces and their teeth are straightening. But visit after visit, I see that their bite isn't improving. And so when I ask them about it, they say, well, doc, come on, the rubber bands, they, they don't work. They don't work on me. Well, the truth is that if your teeth are getting straighter, that means that your teeth are capable of moving. And chances are, if you're not wearing your rubber bands 22 hours a day, seven days a week, then your teeth won't move in the direction um, that your orthodontist wants your teeth to move in and your bite doesn't get fixed in the time frame that uh, is set out. So then your treatment can take longer than anticipated or you finish with straight teeth, but not a corrected bite. So remember to wear your rubber bands. The eighth misconception in orthodontics is that by the time you're done with your orthodontic treatment, you can, your smile will look like name whatever celebrity or model you want. The truth is that just because your teeth are straight and you have a good bite, it does not mean that your smile will, will resemble, you know, a supermodel or a Colgate toothpaste model. I always give the example that, you know, I can work out, you know, seven days a week and, and eat super healthy, but I'm not going to be a supermodel from Victoria's Secret because I'm many inches too short to be um, that supermodel. So remember that just because you go through orthodontic treatment, it doesn't mean that the shape uh, that you can change the shape of your your teeth, the size of your teeth, the uh, whiteness of your teeth, or the shape of your lips, the size of your lips, the projection of your jaws. There are many factors that go into a smile. 
and there are certain things that we can do to improve the look and appearances either through veneers or whitening or uh, lip injections and things like that but there is a limit to what we can achieve and so remember in the orthodontics we are trying to be the best version of you but we can't be a different version of you you can achieve to be the best version of what you're given unless you're willing to do dra more drastic things right like jaw surgery or lip enhancements or um, cosmetic dentistry then that's a different topic. The ninth misconception in orthodontics is similar to what we had just talked about, but that has to do with the hard and soft structures of your face. So of course our, our teeth are framed by our lips. And so the size and shape and color of our lips can determine what our smile looks like. And so the lips cannot be changed to a large degree. And so that kind of dictates what your smile will be like. Similarly, your smile is, uh, your teeth are embedded within jaws, right? So your upper jaw, maxilla, your lower jaw, your uh, mandible. And so some people can have more of a flat smile because they don't have as much of a uh, growth or projection of their upper jaw or they have less defined cheekbones. Uh, so that can affect your final smile. If you have a recessive or a small retronathic mandible, you have a recessive lower jaw, then that will give you a weaker, um, your weaker jawline can affect your smile as well too. The 10th misconception in orthodontics is that you only need to wear your retainers for a few months after active orthodontic treatment and then your bones and your teeth are set. Well, the truth is that our teeth and our bones, they are living structures that change with time, just like our hair doesn't stay the same color, it grays, our, our skin wrinkles, well, teeth crowd, that's just one of the pitfalls of aging and of time. And so just because you finish orthodontic treatment, it doesn't mean that uh, your, your teeth are free from moving. Um, you're, just like I said, your bone uh, is, the teeth within the bone is susceptible to movement. There are periodontal fibers that are uh, embedded within the cementum. Uh, of the roots of our teeth, they are like little rubber bands. They sort of have a memory. So if your teeth were rotated one way and orthodontic treatment ro derotates it into ideal position, the stretching of those fibers can over time have memory and, and gradually shift back to how they used to be. And the truth is that even for those of us who have never had orthodontic treatment and straight teeth, with time, we do see some movement to their teeth. It's just like if you had perfect hair in high school, it doesn't stay that way. And even if you exercised and ate right, you're not going to look the same uh, at 18 as, uh, you know, 38. So that is really important. So if you're done with orthodontic treatment, remember to wear your retainers for a lifetime. It's just part of lifestyle maintenance. It's, if you take a shower today, you got to take another shower tomorrow and the day after. Otherwise, you get pretty stinky. So, um, and then adding on to another point is that sometimes I'll see my retainer patients and I see some relapse relapses of shifting of teeth and usually I'll see it in the lower incisors and I'll ask them what's your retainer wear protocol and they'll say hey Dr. Bailey I just forgot to wear it for one day and my teeth shifted. Um, for most people your teeth won't shift in as little as one day usually if you cheat a little bit you're likely to cheat a little bit more here and there so little bits can add up and here is the thing is that if your teeth shift a little bit then um, after a certain amount of time when you put on your retainers your retainers won't seat all the way you're not able to push your retainers all the way back in and so what that means is that 
you feel secure in thinking that you're wearing your retainer, but your retainers aren't really protecting your teeth from shifting more because they're not fully seated. They're not um, pushed in all the way. So it's like if you bought skinny jeans and um, they look great and you cheated a little bit, you stopped exercising, you stop eating right and you put on your skinny jeans and even though you can pull your jeans up, you can't quite button it. And so, yes, I'm wearing my skinny jeans, but I'm not able to button my skinny jeans. And so even though I'm wearing it, it's not, it's not on all the way. Does that make sense? So it's really important that if you skip a few days of wearing your, uh, your retainers, and especially if you've recently completed treatment, that's when you're most susceptible, your teeth are most susceptible to relapse, it's really important to get back on track as soon as possible. If you're not able to seat your retainers fully, call your orthodontist uh, and get in and be seen immediately because uh, gradually those small changes can really add up to the point where you can't actually put your retainers on and so then you'd be fooled to think that you're wearing your retainers again and everything is okay when in reality your teeth are relapsing more and more and more okay so i hope that these 10 tips are helpful for you i hope you have learned something if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the Trainminder channel. It really helps us out a lot. And this is Dr. Bailey. I'll see you next time. Bye. Trainminder helps busy people remember to wear their aligners. Created by an experienced orthodontist, Trainminder equips you with a timer to track your daily wear time and statistics. Then sends notifications to remind you to wear and change your aligners. Plus. Have fun documenting your smile journey with convenient teeth selfies. Recommended by clear aligner users and orthodontists everywhere. Achieve your best possible smile today with Treminder.